Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And it's time to show you all the cool new knives that hit our shelves in the last week. Got a few things here in front of me, let's check them out. So with just the things I've got here in front of me, it's going to be a little bit of a lighter week in terms of quantity, but we've got some really high profile items to hit our shelves. And the first one is the new ZT Model 230. So normally when ZT releases stuff outside of the typical show schedules, we usually expect it to be a sprint run, but that's not the case with the 230. So this is a non-locking knife. It's designed by Jens Anso, or Jens Anso, however you want to pronounce it. Pretty sure it's Jens, but maybe he'll comment at some point and let us know whether we're right or wrong. Um, but it's a cool little non-locking knife. It's not quite a slip joint because it doesn't have a back spring. Uh, the way this actually functions is if you look in uh, from the front, it looks like there's two different liners, uh, almost like a, you would see on a liner lock on each side. They don't ex ex exactly, or they don't actually engage the tang of the blade, but both of those strips of metal uh, act on the side of the blade as a dual detent system. So that gives it a little bit more strength than a single detent. And this is gonna be really hard to see on camera. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get it. Um, because even just looking at it, it's kind of a, a, a hairline sliver as, as the knife is open. But once you close it, both of those detents push back up into the, the carbon fiber handle scales. It's pretty cool uh, the way they've managed to do that and the way they've managed to get that amount of rigidity and tension without the use of a, of a typical slip joint leaf spring here on the back. Blade itself is this cool sheep's foot profile, CPM 20 CV steel, and it's got a little bit of a light stone wash finish to it and it's 2.6 inches long. So it comes in under three inches and it's non-locking. So this is a knife that is gonna be a good choice for knife restrictive locales, whether you live, especially places in Europe that restrict blade length and locking mechanisms, it's gonna be really cool. And unlike other non-locking knives, unlike most other slip joints, leave it to zero tolerance, they found a way to make a non-locking knife flip closed, almost like a flipper. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, it's got a nail nick here, but even without it, it's still fairly easy enough to pinch out here, opens the blade neatly. You do have a half stop as well, achieved by those dual detents in there. Um, and the other cool thing is the blade, uh, the presentation side is actually clean. There's no ZT logo on there. Um, there is some branding on the back. You've got the model number, the steel, uh, the made in USA, um, et cetera, on the back. Uh, but the logo itself, you've got zero tolerance along the spine, which is pretty neat. That way they're able to keep that blade clean, has a bit of a classier look, um, and then a, a nice blue uh, backspacer with a lanyard point. Um, pretty sure this is a titanium backspacer. Let me check that real quick. Nope, not titanium. It's actually an anodized aluminum. Um, but it looks really cool. You're not really gonna be able to tell the difference when you're carrying it anyway. Um, but yeah, essentially we've got a flickable closed slip joint or not a slip joint, whatever you wanna call it, non-locking knife from ZT. And it's kind of, it's easy to do that flip too. It takes a little bit of practice to get it to close all the way, uh, but the edges of the spine are nice and chamfered, creates kind of a luxury touch there. Uh, and prices right now on this, 180 bucks. So next up, we've got two new knives from Spyderco this week. Uh, and both of these, let me grab my example here, are based, uh, or is an, are they are an expansion of the family that started with the Spyderco Efficient folder, which is a budget uh, oriented model um, it's a good size, uh, it's got a full metal backspacer. They've essentially taken this knife and created a larger version, and that one's called the Emphasis, and you can see it there next to the Efficient. And they've also done a smaller version known as the Insistent. So each one of these, uh, both models are available with a plain edge or a partially serrated blade. They both come with black G10 handle scales. Little bit of texture, if you're familiar with say the Spyderco Tenacious, it's essentially got that same kind of texture, uh, same amount of texture to it. Blades full flat ground, we're at 3.6 inches around, uh, just about on the efficient, or on the emphasis. It's hard to keep track of some of these Spyderco names sometimes. Uh, and the assistant, insistent, yes, the insistent, uh, we're at just under two and a half inches, which is another great length uh, for certain areas. Um, but both of them are really nice. The blades uh, are full flat ground, HCR13 MOV steel, um, which is their solid, Spyderco solid budget option on these Chinese imported knives. Plenty of length on the handle, even without using the forward finger choil on the emphasis. I can still get a full grip, but then you've got that signature choil where you can choke up on. 
makes it real easy to control that tip, finer control, and more length if you're wearing like bigger gloves, especially work gloves, I could see being the case with this knife. You can really get a full handle length there. The insistent really needs that finger choil to have a full grip because it is a smaller knife. Um, but be, because of that, you know, this happens with a lot of Spydercos, folds up really nice and small. Doesn't take up a ton of room in your pocket. It's a little bit thicker. It's not a super slim carry like say the Benchmade Bug Out, which check out our Knife, knife Center exclusive, very cool knife. Um, but it's still gonna carry very easily um, because it's, it's short when it's folded up but folded out, you get a, a solid grip because of the girth. And that's backed up a little bit too, because both of them have that full metal backspacer, provides a lot of strength. The liners themselves are nice and thick. They're not skimping there, um, which helps especially on the liner lock, which is also very easy to disengage when you want to, because you've got a nice big finger cut out for your thumb to, to disengage that knife or that blade. Um, and then the only place they differ from the emphasis is we've got a, uh, the reversible wire deep carry pocket clip rather than the um, standard folded clip that came on the emphasis. Um, both of those, both of these, or sorry, that came on the efficient. Again, sorry, <laughs> hard to keep, them tra keep track of them. But both of these, the bigger and the smaller now come with that uh, wire deep carry pocket clip. Prices on these uh, start at about 41 for the insistent up to 52 for the emphasis. So the other big news this week is definitely the first set of fixed blades from Victorinox. These are the Swiss Army guys. Now these were actually uh, made for Victorinox by Muela out of Spain. So this isn't a Swiss made knife, um, but it's in addition to being their kind of big for or big push into fixed blades, they went with some bushcraft designs. We've got two here. We've got the Master Mike Large and the Master Mike Small, it's M-I-C. Uh, and what that actually stands for is micarta. The handles have a blue and black canvas micarta layering. We've got some nice red liners as well. And the contouring is really good. It fits the hand super well, really locks in quite nicely. Uh, the blades themselves were at about 5 30 seconds of an inch thick on the Master Mic Large. And of course it comes with a Scandi grind, as you can see. And there's just a hint of a kind of a convex micro bevel right at the edge that's gonna make it a little bit easier to sharpen and a little bit stronger in the long run than a true down to zero Scandi. And that's the way folks like, um, you think of guys like LT Wright, that's the same way they do their Scandi edges and they're well known for being excellent cutters and being very durable. So I don't see that being any different here. So the steel itself is stainless. It's German 4116 stainless steel. So that's contrary to popular belief that uh, some folks have been saying that this is not actually the exact same stainless steel that Victorinox uses for their Swiss Army knives, for their pocket knives. It is a little bit different. Not the best edge retention in the world, certainly, but it is gonna be very stain resistant, very corrosion resistant, and touch up easily in the field. Combined with that Scandi grind as well, where you can uh, lay that flat on the stone and really feel that bevel, it's gonna be very easy to keep this knife hair popping sharp, certainly. We've also got an extended pommel, an exposed uh, extended tang here at the butt of the knife. That's gonna do a couple things for you in an outdoor scenario. One, you can of course use it for thumping, you can crack some things open. And if you ever actually need to drive this into something, it's very rare, but it does happen, that's gonna protect the handles of your knife if you need to hammer on the back of that just a little bit. The sheath it comes with is Kydex. Snaps right in very nicely. We've got a big um, tab here with a nice drop leg system, as well as a slide lock here. So you unscrew that push this up near the top and lock it down. And that's gonna help secure the knife from being uh, accidentally pulled out. Like you're, you really do have to push that back before you can pull the knife out. So it also comes with a simple fire steel here on the side with an included fire steel loop. Um, and it's a lot like the, uh, the original Light My Fire fire steels, the old version, uh, in terms of how the handle is shaped. And you got a nice bit of red paracord here to go kind of coordinate with the liners. Um, you've also got a drain hole in the bottom of the Kydex sheath to help moisture drain out when you're, uh, if you're in adverse conditions. Moving on to the small, you can kind of get an idea for the size comparison here, um, which I, I think is important because a lot of places that have been covering this on the web um, have shown photos of these side by side and they've got this way too big compared to the large. So that, this here really gives you an idea of how big the Master Mike small is. The blade itself is about two and three quarters of an inch and it's kind of a three and a half finger knife for my larger hands. 
my three fingers fit in this main sweep here. My pinky does hit uh, the, the back of the pommel a little bit, it has a little bit of sweep there. Um, so that does allow me to get a little bit of purchase there. But of course you also have a nice lanyard hole. So if you wanna add a, a fob to extend your grip length, you've got that as well. Scandi grind again, but we're at uh, about an eighth of an inch thick this time, not the full 5.30 seconds. Uh, and a little bit of a swedge here at the tip too. Kind of will help keep that, um, that tip a little better for piercing because this is a smaller knife. Uh, you might be more inclined to carry this day to day. So that's gonna make it a little more useful in those types of roles beyond just the, uh, like the bushcraft and the camping and the hiking. But I think this is gonna make a really cool whittling knife. Um, you know, it's not a, a full, full handle, but think of like old school pocket knives and the stuff people used to carve and whittle with those. I think this is a great kind of alternative to that because you've got enough grip to control it really nicely. You've got that great Scandi grind. It's gonna be great at that sort of thing. Sheath on this one is Kydex as well. Doesn't come with any belt attachment hardware. It does come with a length of paracord though. Um, and you, you could, with it threaded this way, you actually could thread your belt through there if it's a narrower belt. Um, and actually, even if, if you extended this down to this hole, the holes here at the back, or bottom I should say, uh, you might be able to fit a larger belt too. Or very easy to add your own paracord and carry it inverted uh, for neck carry. Prices on these guys were at about 120 on the Master Mic Small and about 200 on the Master Mic Large. So that's not all the new Victorinox this week. We actually have a Swiss Army knife. It's, the, it's a special edition actually. It's the Ranger Grip 55 Autumn Spirit. Uh, and that gives us a real cool orange coloration um, instead of the standard red to the Ranger Grip series. Being Grip, you've uh, Ranger Grip series, you've got some cool rubberized inlays in there that really help with the, uh, with the grip. Saying grip a lot, I wonder why. Maybe they should call it Ranger Grip or something. But it's got a really nice blade on it with the standard Victorinox stainless steel, not the 4116. Um, no one hand opening on this, but I think that creates a cleaner look personally. Um, and even though it doesn't really get in the way, I kind of feel like it feels like this knife should be more agile without the hump. Part of that's probably just uh, conditioning and, and placebo effect, if you want to call it that. But I, I just, I love the lines of these and the Trekkers too, and that's that size of knife without the, the thumb opener. Thinks, I think it makes it look really, really great. Um, unlocking on this, this is a liner locking knife, but it's disengaged by the button here. So you can see the liner move when you do that. Makes it very easy to close. And then you've got a nice wood saw very effective little cutter, especially on this, this slightly larger size. And that's a non-locking tool. Then of course your standard bottle opener, screwdriver, as well as can opener screwdriver. On the other side, you got an awl and a corkscrew and your toothpick and tweezers in standard Swiss Army fashion. Even comes with a cool little kind of camo paracord lanyard to throw on the back if you want. Um, so they're really cool. Um, the red and the yellow versions of the Ranger Grip series have always looked nice, um, but the orange is cool. Like it's, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they haven't done it before. Uh, and we're right about 60 bucks on that knife. So we've also got a new version of the Victorinox Swiss Card multi-tool. This is the Spring Spirit pattern. Um, kind of a neat print. Um, they definitely, you know, there's no way, two ways of getting around it. They are clearly gearing this more towards female customers. And for folks out there with the holidays coming up, this is gonna make a great gift for your significant other, I think. You got a lot of cool uh, implements in this slim plastic housing. It can live in a wallet, in a bag, in a purse, um, all kinds of little places actually. Um, and it's a fixed blade. <laughs> I just love that. You do get that, that little kind of pen blade that slides out of there. But in addition to that, you've got a nice pair of scissors on the end here as well as your toothpick and tweezers. You've also got a nail file, the small sewing pin, and also their ballpoint pen cartridge. And this is a pressurized cartridge, so it's, sim so it's similar to say like the Fisher Space Pen out of there. You can write upside down with it without uh, losing ink flow. Um, but that's a great little way to kind of have another writing implement on you with all these other tools. Uh, and you've also got ruler mechanism on the side here, the, on the Angled side here, it's centimeters, and on the back, you've got inches. It's about three inch graduations there. Um, if you don't like the, this specific print, we've got other versions, the standard versions with the red scales and some other uh, options as well. Uh, but this one right here that's new is about 32 bucks right now. 
So next up is a new Kaiser and it's the Domen Mini. Obviously a scaled down version of the original Domen, but this thing uh, in this mini size offers a really great EDC friendly size. I'm saying size a lot, but that size is just relative, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but the mini version, we're at about just under three inches of blade length. Again, a great option if you have a blade length restriction. Um, a couple different colors, blue, black, and purple. Steel itself is N690 and it flicks open very nicely. It's not a flipper, so you don't have uh, that little protrusion sticking out, makes it a little more streamlined in the pocket, but the dual thumb studs work great for sure. Um, Stonewash finish on the blade, I don't remember if I mentioned that. A really usable and simple drop point shape overall, and it feels really good, it feels nice in the hand. Um, obviously it's not super girthy, so it's not gonna be as comfortable really bearing down on some stuff, but a great size and shape for EDC. You can see it's a liner lock, although the, the G10s actually are, are more like onlays than they are the actual handle scales. Um, an argument could be made that this is a frame lock covered up. I'm not necessarily gonna make that argument, um, but I will say it's a nice beefy liner lock. So you've got a lot of material behind the blade itself to hold it open. Two position pocket clip as well, not deep carry or anything. Uh, and you've got a little bit of a lanyard attachment point at the back. Now, just from a head-on uh, shot, it looks pretty narrow, but it's actually scalloped out of the back. So instead of going straight through, you'd kind of be threading it in a U-shape through there. So you do have a little bit more room in there to move to move your material through than it would appear from first glance. Kaiser Doman Mini, 55 bucks, really cool knives. So next up is a new Spartan fixed blade, the new Harsey Dagger. Obviously by the name, you can tell this is a Bill Harsey design whose pedigree is, is pretty unimpeachable. His track record of fantastic designs is, is impeccable. And this version of a combat dagger is his take on exactly what that knife should be, refined down to it's just the best elements and the most desirable shape, size, weight that you could have in that style of knife. We've got two different blade finishes. Now these are PVD coatings and we have the flat dark earth as well as a black blade. And then each one of those version, each uh, color is available either with a kydex sheath or with a nylon sheath for a little bit less money. The handles are G10 and you can see we've got some cool radial milling and the, the hourglass shape to it is really cool. It feels really good. Um, Index is pretty nicely in the hand and it tapers here at the front to make some good pinch grips. Um, again, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a tactical guy, I'm not tactically trained, um, but it, it's one of those knives that feels incredibly balanced and, and incredibly quick if you wanna really use it fast. In trained hands, I'm sure it's gonna be very formidable indeed. Another cool thing about the G10 scales is they actually cover up the tang of the knife completely. So you don't have any metal sticking out. It's a very smooth transition from one side to the next. It's very cool. Now, even though there's no tang sticking out on the sides, you do get a little bit of a protruding point here at the back. Again, similar to that Swiss Army knife that you can use that for thumping on things, not gonna tell you what, um, as well as if you need to hammer on the end of that, it's gonna protect the handles itself. It's just some really cool shape, a really cool hourglass shape to that hand, those handles just feel fantastic. It is a double-edged blade, obviously. Um, I mentioned the coating, I didn't mention the steel. This is S35VN. Being a Spartan, that's not entirely unexpected. You've got that double upturned guard as well, and a fair bit of Ricasso here that doesn't have an edge, and that should be useful if you have it lodged in a target. You can kind of get your thumb or your finger in front of the guard to help pull it out. Now here's the sheath, that, the Kydex sheath option that you can get it with. It does click in very nicely, and you've got plenty of hole spaced patterns here. You can see the drop carry system there. You can either thread this through your belt, these two straps here, um, they're secured by a pull the dot snap here on the back, so they only open from one direction, makes it a little more secure. Uh, but these are actually sized to be Molly compatible as well. So if you uh, have that kind of gear you need to attach this to, you do have that option with this sheath. But overall, I really like the knife. Um, like I said, feels great. It's kind of a modern update. I don't know whether you'd say it's more of a Fairbairn Sykes inspired or whether it's more uh, Applegate inspired. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, but we're at 390 on this knife, US made for the nylon sheath versions and 420 for Kydex. Finally, we've got a new series of kitchen knives from Spyderco, and these are in collaboration with Murray Carter, and this is his Itame series. 
Now we've got a range of different knives in this series. We've got them all in now, including smaller petty size knives, Nakiris for those of you who like that kind of vegetable style of uh, vegetable style cutting cleaver, um, larger Gyotsus and Funyukis. But this one right here is the Bunka Bocho. So the reason I pulled this one specifically is that this knife won the both the Best in Show Award and the Best Kitchen Knife Award at Blade Show West that just happened. Obviously this has a very classic style uh, to it in terms of Japanese style kitchen cutlery, uh, but the construction is all Spyderco. So the blade itself is a full flat grind and it's laminated too, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got 410 stainless outer layers and a Hitachi Super Blue core. So the materials are right up there, very similar to the stuff Murray Carter uses on his fully forged custom knives. Uh, he uses Super Blue and uses a lot of Hitachi white steel as well. Uh, Japanese made, as you would expect, given the style and given that steel, this is a Seki City Japan knife. Uh, but the handles feature this really cool Burl G10 material. They are octagonal, so they have that kind of classic uh, Eastern style knife feel in the hand. Uh, the edges themselves have all kind of been rounded off just a little bit. Uh, not the edges here on the sides, but just on the end, so you don't have a sharp corner sticking out. But they balance very nicely. And there's something a little different about this knife. It is a Spyderco. There's no spider hole. Even though, you know, they put that on a lot of their fixed blades. You got that little uh, little dot of a hole, but they don't uh, do that on this knife. So, I don't know. I don't think they made a mistake, uh, but maybe they'll do that again later. Who knows? But overall, it's a really cool series, this Itame series. It's actually, uh, the name itself um, is a title reserved for highly skilled workers. Uh, or highly, uh, highly skilled sushi chefs, I should say, who have earned the right to be in front of the cutting board uh, and talking to people directly as opposed to behind the cutting board. Um, so it's a, that's kind of a really cool nod about this knife. Prices on these range from 235 for the Petty up to 400 for the larger uh, Gyotu, which has a 10 and a quarter inch or a bit over 10 inch blade. Uh, this Bunka Bocho, which is a little bit under eight inches, about seven and three quarters, we're at 350 on this guy. So that's it for the new stuff this week. Make sure to let us know what you thought of all of these items or any of the items in particular down in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, you can always use the links in the description to head over to KnifeCenter.com. See you next time. Said that right, right? Yes, I did. All right. Size, size, size. It's relative. <laughs> that's legal advice. We can't talk about it. We can't talk about it. On this quick edit. <laughs> it's getting longer. Can't say that. That's what our website says. Oh. <laughs>